So after seeing Living, I went and saw The Fablemans, uh, the new Steven Spielberg movie. I know. <laughs> You're probably going, You're now seeing this? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm now seeing this. And I even, I was, I went out to eat with my mom after I saw this. And she's like, You didn't see that already? And I said, No. <laughs> it's like, for some fucking reason, I have no idea. I'll explain this. I'll say this over and over and over again. My feeder, Regal Cinemas, for some reason, a lot of Regal Cinemas near me, did not play this movie. I don't know why. I have zero... I, I'm more shocked about this than I was like the whale. Because, like, this is Steven fucking Spielberg we're talking about. I mean, Jesus Christ. He's like the biggest filmmaker ever, probably. <laughs> Of the modern of this generation at least um maybe one of the greatest of all time and it's like this personal story about his life uh told through a fictional family uh but it's obviously supposed it has parallels to his real life uh childhood and i i was like why the hell i, I still don't know what happened i don't know why but now I'm, i officially got it <laughs> like i saw it like there's only one showtime today. Like, this whole weekend, there's only one showtime for The Fablemans. I don't know why. I know this movie isn't doing well, and I know this and West Side Story has... His last movie, West Side Story, didn't do well. I don't know if that's one of the reasons why. I wouldn't think that would be the reason why, but, as I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I and it's really a goddamn shame that like this and West Side Story are uh and I was looking forward to this by the way. Uh that those what this West Side Story did not do well because these are honestly two this is long this along with West Side Story are probably two of Steven Spielberg's best movies in a long goddamn time. I really like this movie. I really, 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 really like this movie. I thought it was a damn good movie. Uh it's not my favorite movie of, of the year. Definitely not. Uh, I feel like I've seen a lot better. But this is a pretty goddamn good film. And it's a movie... I even thought to myself after watching this, I kind of liked living a little bit better. And that's saying something because this is a movie that's going after my own heart because I'm a big fan of movies and this is basically a love letter to movies. Uh, and, I mean, yeah, it is. But uh, it is a good movie. I really... It, and like this is coming you know there's a good there's a portion of this movie that takes place in ohio which if you don't know i live in ohio uh, i think it's you know, spielberg was from cincinnati um and so that, you know, i do kind of have like a love i mean this movie has a little soft spot in my heart because of that shit but um i i really love this this is a really good movie a really well performed movie a real well acted movie i thought the kid uh, that's playing, uh, uh, not Steven Spielberg, uh, uh, this was really good and a really likable character in this movie. Um, can we please, for the love of God, get Michelle Williams an Oscar already? <laughs> this woman is acting her ass off. She's really good in this movie. She is a character that I have some problems with, but she is really good in it because... Like, she is the, you know, stereotypical supportive mother that supports her son's dreams, even though her dad kind of, his dad kind of doesn't. He doesn't, like, absolutely, like, he he, he does buy his, uh, his son, like, an editing machine and cameras and stuff like that, help him, try to help him. But Michelle Williams is really the one that kind of, he has a real close relationship with and that he, uh he she was the one that's very supportive of his uh passion to become a filmmaker and this movie it's interesting it's like i want to know how much of this is true i mean there's parts of it i know are true like spielberg directing like making these little movies when he was a kid like a western and a world war ii movie if you look it up he really did do that i really want to see there has to be footage of, there he has probably I would imagine he still has those. I want to see those. I want to see his original films. That would be really cool to watch. They should be archived for fuck's sake. 
Like, <laughs> I don't know if they... I don't know if they are available. Maybe they are. I, mean, I don't know, but, it, like, I would love to see those. Um, but he, uh... Yeah, like, there's a lot of aspects that are pretty much taken from Spielberg's childhood and his career and life. But then, like, I don't know about the aspects of his mom and whether they're true or not, or they're the same in, in real life as they are in a movie. Like, there's a whole subplot where he finds out through his films that, he, like, especially when he's filming a camping trip, his mom is secretly having an affair with his dad's best friend, played by Seth Rogen, who, by the way, I love the fact that Seth Rogen, like, kind of played against type in this movie. It's kind of cool to see him in this movie. I guess, like, they tried to get every Jewish actor in one single movie, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that made me kind of laugh. I mean, they got Seth Rogen in. He's really good in this movie. I like seeing him, like, in a straight man role, man. It's so cool. Um, it's nice to see him show his acting chops. He's not bad in this movie. He is on, it's Seth Rogen. It's, he was also good in that Steve Jobs uh, movie that came out, like, ten years ago. Um, and, um, but I don't know if that is at all any accurate or whatever. But also, his mom had some mental issues. And in this movie, she apparently had some mental issues. I did read somewhere that they said that Spielberg... Uh, he wanted to make this movie for a long time, like, in the 90s, late 90s, I think. It was, like, the earliest he wanted to make this. And he, him and his sister were work, wanting to work on it, but he was not sure if he wanted to do it. I think, ups, not to upset his parents or his mom. I don't know if this is one of the reasons why. Uh, and, like, her character is interesting. There's some interesting directions they go with some of these characters. Particularly in the opening, about first 20 minutes. I live in Ohio. I know people in Ohio and in states like Ohio love to, like, go outside and look, watch tornadoes. I know that's a thing. Like, there's a tornado that go, ha touches down. Like, Mom, there's a tornado. And they all run outside to the yard to go look at it. I've heard of people doing stupid shit like that in Ohio and states like this. But I never heard of anybody in a life, fucking life, ever going, Hey, let's all go in the car and go try to, like, get a picture, better, uh, view of the tornado. Let's drive down the streets while the tornado is just blowing through fucking houses. What? <laughs> like, she literally takes her kids, puts them all in a car, and fucking drives through town while this tornado is blowing shit all around. I'm like... Like, that's child endangerment. And at that point, I'm like, uh, or does this movie try to tell me this character has mental health issues? Because I'm pretty sure she does. I mean, no normal person would do this. And they do. It's like, <laughs> um, I, I did like that. Um, this movie did have some funny moments in it. I'll give it that. That's a pretty good, um, f the, uh, I'll even give Paul Dano. Paul Dano, I'm up for a few. Paul Dano was very good in the movie, too, as his dad. That was nice. I, Paul Dano, was, it's amazing watching him. Him and Michelle Williams for me. Michelle Williams, my sister loved Dawson's Creek, and I fucking hated that show. But watching, even watching that show back then, you could tell Michelle Williams was a really good actress, and she was going to be a big name, great actress, and, well, she is. And like I said, they need to give that girl an Oscar. And Paul Dano's really fucking good. He's gotten so good over the years. Um, this movie is pretty funny. It has some pretty fucking wacky things. Like, there's some things I never thought I'd see in a Spielberg movie. Particularly a scene where a for a brief moment, becomes like a teen sex comedy from the 80s. Um, where there's this weird fucking scene. It was pretty fun. It was very funny, though. Uh, where I've never seen, thought I'd seen a Spielberg movie, uh, where he, the kid, it, he meets this girl who's really into Jesus, and when he's in high school, he's going to high school in California, there is these guys that are bullying him for being Jewish, and apparently that was a real thing that Spielberg dealt with in real life. I can believe that, because it's, you know, but there's this scene where he, it's like something out of a teen sex comedy where he goes into this girl's room 
and they're praying for Jesus, and it's like all of sexual innuendo, and it's fucking hilarious. It's really well done. It's a really funny scene. But it was weird seeing the fucking Spielberg movie. Um, <laughs> uh, it's weird that this movie has Judd Hirsch got an Oscar nomination when he's in this movie for like maybe 10 minutes. That was weird. Of all the fucking people other than Michelle Williams to get a fucking Oscar nomination, Judd Hirsch got it. I don't think he's fun in what he was, but really? <laughs> I don't, like none of the other ones. I ain't Paul Dano. I don't know. Um, I love the I love the ending of the movie too. Uh, I thought the ending of the movie, or spoiler alert, he meets John Ford, and that scene with John Ford was pretty fucking funny. It gets a little cute at the end of the movie because John Ford gives him like he's this foul mouthed asshole and like it's like his hero. Although I did laugh my ass off that apparently, according to this movie, the movie that made him want to become a filmmaker obsessed with films was the greatest show on earth really that one that movie all right uh i mean yeah uh i mean everybody has their star wars and jurassic park for me jurassic park uh greatest show on earth all right one of the worst movies ever won best picture sure uh and, uh, yeah, John Ford is, like, one of his favorite filmmakers, uh, according to this movie. And, uh, he meets him at the end. And, like, there's a, the way it ends is a little cute, a little cutesy. There's a lot of Spielberg moments in the movie. There's definitely a lot of Spielberg movies, moments in the movie. The bullies are kind of, I mean, they give the bullies, they're kind of one note. They're not, honestly, that that's some of the stuff that could have been cut out and would have been fine. Uh... It was, it was not bad for what it was. It's it's a fun, fun movie, and it's definitely a passion project for Spielberg. It feels like a passion project, and you, you can tell while watching it. I kind of like West Side Story better than this. This remake, I fucking love West Side Story, the remake of West Side Story. I thought it was fantastic, uh, and I thought it was it was a little bit better than this. But it's like I watched that, and I was like, man, I ever seen. What the remake of West Side Story, and I said, it's a real goddamn shame that we never got his version of Cats. I really want to see his version of Cats. It was an it was gonna be animated, which is what it should have been, uh, and I really want to see that version, man. Like, I bet it actually would be really good. Like, watching West Side Story, you're like, man, this guy is. It was his first time making a musical, and he really loves... He, he, you can tell his love for musicals, and he makes a really good damn musical. Um, and like I said, I really like this movie for what it was. Uh, yeah, that's as far as the Fablemans go. Uh, tomorrow is the Banshees at Incheron and Infinity Pool. Um, I hope, unless I change my mind, if I, I might have to split it up. I don't know. I might, I might just take a break for tomorrow. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but... Until then, I'll talk to you guys later.